Hey, so way back when, in the 17th century, so like a million years ago, Isaac Newton and the Dutch astronomer Christian Huygens were both thinking about light and what it was made up of. But when they both thought about it, they came to very different conclusions. The main issue was that any theory about the nature of light had to explain reflection and refraction and diffraction and colour. And I'm sure you don't need me to explain what reflection and colour are, but the other two may need a little bit of explaining. So refraction is the bending of light as it passes from one substance to another substance. And it's how lenses can focus light. And diffraction is the spreading out of light when it passes through a very narrow gap. So before Newton's experiments, it was generally accepted that light gains its color by interacting with matter. So that famous rainbow effect seen when light passes through a prism is created because the prism has somehow stained the light. But Newton showed that the white light that we can see is actually, in fact, a mixture of different colours of light. And these colours are split by a prism because they are all refracted by different amounts. And along with all the other big boy philosophers at the time, Newton believed that light consisted of a stream of particles. And if light was a stream of particles, then this could potentially explain how light could travel in straight lines and how it could bounce off reflective surfaces. It could also explain refraction in terms of forces at the boundaries between different materials. However, however, Newton's theory, as good as it was, I mean, I couldn't have come up with anything half as good. It didn't explain how when light hits several surfaces, some is reflected and some is refracted. So on the other hand, we had Christian Huygens, right? And he argued that space was full of weightless particles, the ether, and that light caused disturbances in the ether that spread out in spherical waves. Refraction was then explained if different substances, say like ether, water or glass, caused light waves to travel at different speeds. So his theory could explain why both reflection and refraction can occur at a surface. And it could also explain diffraction too. So as expected, his theory was disregarded, completely disregarded by the other big lads in science at the time, because that's just how it is, ain't it? And the thing was that Newton was one of them big lads. But wait. Like, a century later, a chap called Thomas Young showed that light actually does behave like a wave. And, 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 more mind-blowingly, experiments in the 20th century demonstrated that not only does light behave like a wave, but it also behaves like a particle too. However, there are pretty big differences between Ullmann Huygens' spherical waves and our modern models of light. But considering what tools he had at the time, fair bloody play to him. So Huygens also said that light waves were longitudinal as they passed through a substance, the ether. And like I mentioned in my video about waves, sound waves are also longitudinal waves in which the particles of the substance the wave is passing through vibrate in the same direction as the wave is travelling. Our modern view of light waves is that they are transverse waves that behave more like waves of water. They do not need matter to transmit or propagate while particles vibrate at right angles up down to the wave's um, direction. And this little explanation was brought to you by Audible. Audible are offering all of you guys a 30 day free trial with a free audiobook and two Audible originals if you go to audible.com forward slash science with Katie or text science with Katie to 500 500. And Audible, in case you don't already know, is a leading provider of premium digital spoken audio information and entertainment on the internet. Audible content includes an unmatched selection of audiobooks and other audio products. Audible members now get even more than ever before. Members choose three titles every month one audiobook plus two Audible originals that you can't hear anywhere else. And with the app, members can access Audible anytime at the gym while commuting on the go and on any device. And one of my favourite popular science books, Why Does E Equal MC Squared and Why Should We Care, is available on Audible too. It gives really accessible explanations of the theory of relativity. They discuss the real meaning behind the iconic sequence of symbols that make up Einstein's most famous equation. And they explore the principles of physics through everyday life. You could start listening with a 30-day Audible trial and your first audiobook plus two Audible originals are free. Visit audible.com forward slash science with Katie or text science with Katie to 500 500. So go check out what you can listen to and if you like this video give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more hit subscribe. A big thank you to my patrons on Patreon and thank you for watching. Bye!